Kobate is the second largest and second least densely populated of Japan's 47 prefectures. From its dramatic coastline to its spectacular mountains, Iwate offers a wide variety of attractions, including a town that once rivaled Kyoto with its culture, rustic hot springs, unique culinary traditions, and a capital city which the New York Times ranked second among the places to go in the world in 2023. My name is Reina Ong and let me take you on a tour of where to go and what to do on your first trip to Iwate. Day 1 Located in northeastern Japan, Iwate is easily accessed by the Tohoku Shinkansen. From Tokyo, we board the bullet train, get off at Ichinoseki Station, and transfer to Hiraizumi. There, we'll rent a bicycle and go first to Chusonji Temple, then to Takoku no Iwaya, two major attractions in the area. Afterwards, we'll take the train north to a hot spring accommodation in Hanamaki, where we'll end the day. Hiraizumi was the seat of one of Japan's most powerful noble families of the 12th century and the former cultural and political center of northeastern Japan, rivaling Kyoto, the old capital of Japan. The clan and town declined long ago, but enough cultural treasures remain to make Hiraizumi a UNESCO Cultural World Heritage Site. Inside this seemingly ordinary looking building is the Konjikido, which is covered in gold both inside and out, and also how the building got its name. I'm going inside to take a look. Konjikido is said to illustrate Buddhist paradise, and in addition to the gilded walls, one can also see intricate and elaborately decorated Buddhist artwork inlaid with ivory and mother of pearl. From Chusonji, it is a 30-minute bicycle ride to my next spot, Takoku no Iwaya. Founded over 1,200 years ago, Takoku no Iwaya is a temple built into the face of a cliff and is dedicated to Bishamonten, one of the four guardian kings in Buddhism. The main building is supposedly modelled after the famous Kiyomizudera in Kyoto, with the main hall standing on support beams. Also, carved into the rock face beside the main building is a statue of Buddha, whose face measures about three and a half metres long. From Takoku no Iwaya, we'll return to Hiraizumi Station and take a train ride to Hanamaki, where we'll transfer to a free shuttle bus to Osawa Onsen, our accommodation for the night. Legend has it that over 1,200 years ago, a military commander who was shot with a poisoned arrow healed from his injuries in the hot springs of Osawa. And since then, the onsen's healing properties have remained undisputed. Besides a full-service ryokan, Osawa Onsen features an old-fashioned self-catering toji wing, which used to be common for extended stays at hot springs in the old days, but of which not many remain in Japan today. Accommodation at the Toji Wing is reasonably cheap and consists of basic Japanese-style rooms with shared toilets and a common kitchen. Over here we've got a gas stove where you put in 10 yen and turn the lever. And when you do, you get 10 yen worth of gas to cook your meals. As it is a hot spring accommodation, I check out the different baths before dinner.
I don't have to cook my dinner because I'm not staying at the Toji Wing. So, itadakimasu! Day 2 Day 2 begins after breakfast in catching the train to Morioka, the capital city of Iwate Prefecture. We'll explore the town on foot and head first to learn about the local craft, then experience the unique traditional cuisine for lunch, visit some historical sites and cafes, and end the day at a local microbrewery. Morioka Castle was where the feudal lord Nambu and his descendants ruled over the Morioka domain for centuries. The family's name became synonymous with the domain, and these days you can find traditional craft with the name Nambu attached to it, such as Nambu Tekki or Nambu Ironware. Primarily made in Morioka and Oshu cities, these distinctive and traditional Nambu ironware kettles are highly prized for their simple yet elegant designs. In addition, boiling water in a Nambu Tekki pot is said to produce soft water suitable for making teas. I also visit a cozy cafe where I could taste firsthand drinks made with water that has been boiled in a traditional kettle. A trip to Morioka is not complete without trying wanko soba, in which diners try to eat as many bowls of soba noodles as they can. It's said that this dish has a long history and today is a unique food culture in and around Morioka. I've got my bib on and I'm ready to take on the wanko soba challenge. I've got some side dishes and condiments to eat the soba with and each bowl contains about a mouthful of soba. Now this is not a race and I'm going to try to eat as many bowls as I can. And my goal for today is 100, so let's see if I get there. After that filling lunch, it was time to go for a bit of a walk to the temple district. Our route takes us past the Ishiwari Zakura tree, one of the treasures of Morioka, then along the picturesque Teramachi Street, before arriving at Hoonji Temple. Hoonji Temple is known for its 500 statues of Buddhist disciples or Dakan, which was said to be carved over a period of four years by nine artisans in Kyoto. that temple visit, we continue our exploration of Morioka and stop by Nagasawa Coffee for a coffee break. If I had to sum up what Morioka is like, I would say it's a major city with small neighborhood vibes and where you can find lots of independent shops with great personalities all within walking distance. So to bring my day in Morioka City to a close, I head to Bayron's Sai and Microbrewery, a local craft beer brewery that also offers small bites. It's the end of the day and I'm here at a local brewery that has been around for about 20 years. So, Dampai! Day 3 Our last day in Iwate Prefecture will be spent along the Sanbiku coast, which was hit by the 2011 tsunami. From Morioka Station, we'll take the scenic and quaint local line to the fishing town of Miyako, where we'll try some of the fresh local seafood before visiting Jodogahama, a paradise beach on Earth. Then, we'll drive about an hour north to Kitayamazaki to see some of the most spectacular coastline in all of Japan and its stunning tall sea cliffs.
arriving in Miyako, we'll pick up a rental car to get around on our last day. Miyako City was one of the many coastal cities in Iwate Prefecture to be badly damaged by the 2011 tsunami. In Miyako, it claimed the lives of over 500 people and destroyed many homes and businesses. It's been more than a decade since the disaster, and I'm glad to see that the recovery process has progressed well. As a coastal city, seafood is a major local specialty of Miyako, and naturally, that's what I'll have for lunch. I go to a sushi restaurant near the fishing port which serves up fresh local seafood. For lunch, you can choose between sushi or a seafood rice bowl and guess which one's mine. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. After lunch, I head into the port area, which is separated from the city by large seawalls, and where you can find the fish market and the roadside station where tickets to the Uminekomaru sightseeing boat to Jodogahama, an icon of the Sandiku coast and my next spot, can be purchased. These are the seawalls which were built after the disaster to protect the city from future tsunami and you can see similar ones along the rest of the coast. One of the highlights of taking the short boat ride between Miyako's fishing port and Jodogahama is feeding the local seagulls which fly alongside the boat. In fact, the sightseeing boat is named after Umineko, the local seagull variety. Once I get to Jodogahama, I go to the visitor center to learn about the area before embarking on the 15-minute trail to the iconic beach. Jodogahama is a beautiful beach akin to the Buddhist paradise, with its white stone beach, calm waters, and rocky islands jutting out of the ocean. Jodogahama suffered some damage during the 2011 tsunami with waters coming up to a height of 6.5 meters, but it didn't take long for the tourist facilities to be rebuilt. An approximately one-hour drive from Miyako takes me to Kitayamazaki, which is known for its dramatic sea cliffs. Alternatively, the two spots can be accessed via the Sandiku Railway, which became a symbol of the region's revival as it passes through many coastal towns that were badly damaged by the 2011 tsunami. I'm here at the Kitayamazaki observation deck from where you can get views of the epic coastline. Check it out! There are three observation decks at Kitayamazaki from where we can appreciate the views of the coastline. Those who want a more exciting view can consider walking down a flight of about 750 steps to get closer to the waterline and be treated to a view of the cliffs and rock formations. Breathtaking views make for a grand ending to our three days in Iwate Prefecture, and I'm glad that we could share this together. Thanks for joining me. I hope this video has been enjoyable and perhaps even inspire some ideas should you decide to plan a trip to Iwate. For more information about this trip or to watch another video, click the links on the screen now or head over to japanguide.com your comprehensive, up-to-date travel guide firsthand from Japan. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell for more videos about Japan. Happy travels!